Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and this study by Brother Stephen Miller titled, What is Truth? As you listen, if you have any comments, questions, or prayer requests, you can send those by email to BBBFOhio at Yahoo.com. That's BBBFOhio at Yahoo.com. Or you can send your letter by U.S. Postal to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And now we begin our study titled, What is Truth? Presented by Bible teacher Stephen Miller. This is part one of two. So if you would, we're going to do a Bible study. I don't have any uh, slides or anything like that. My, <laughs> my computer, the little jack thing won't work. And then Mariah's computer... Um, somehow the screen broke, so now we have to um, use our Bibles. It's terrible. Okay, so get, get your Bible out. Well, I'll, I'll give you time. And go to uh, the book of John, John chapter 18. We're going to do um, a study that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I talk to people all the time that just don't seem to understand. Um, they don't seem to understand what, thank you. Was it, was it on? Okay, they don't seem to understand what truth is. Okay, and I did about two, two three years ago now, just a quick study on truth. John chapter 18, oh hey, there I am. Wow, John chapter 18, Go to verse 38. And in this, uh, we have uh, the crucifixion of Jesus, where actually this is his trial. Jesus is being tried by, uh, by the Romans, and he's being tried by, uh, by the, the Jews also. So um, here in John 18:38, we see Pilate asks a really strange question. So, and... Uh, Pilate actually, he said uh, in John 18, 38, he said, Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? Uh -huh. I'm going to stop right there. So Pilate actually, uh, what he did was he asked, what is truth? And I intend to answer that question. Amen. Now what, what Pilate did was he asked a question and then he thought that he already knew the answer to the question because he didn't he didn't wait for an answer. Actually, he's asking Jesus a lot of questions. But then Pilate asks, what is truth? And then he turns around, goes outside, and proclaims the innocence of Jesus. So he, he knew what the truth was, and that Jesus was innocent. That's what he did. So we'll go ahead and pray, and then we'll get started. Father, please uh, bless the lesson tonight. Help me to uh, teach what's supposed to be taught and help the people to learn what they're supposed to learn. Thank you for the... Uh, Good song by my wife. Thank you for letting my little baby be here. Thank you, Lord. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we're going to, uh, so Pilate mockingly asked Jesus, what is truth? Pilate didn't, you know, he didn't wait to know the answer. Uh, he just thought that he uh, knew the answer, and then he, he left. One of the things that, I encounter a lot is um, this, well, I encounter it with, uh, with, with apologists of other religions, you know. I, I had a, a, an encounter with my stepfather not long ago where he said that, uh, you know, bas basically the, synop the synopsis is, well, if this person believes enough that their faith will get them to heaven, then they'll get to heaven just because of their belief. And uh, unfortunately, that's not actually true. Just because you have a belief in something doesn't mean that that's actually going to happen. And so he's, people growing up, they have this, this skewed version of what, what the definition of truth is. We're going to define, I'm going to use the Bible to define truth here in just a minute. But uh, they have this, um, this rationalism, you know, this, this John Dewey, you know, rationalism from these... Um, you know, they, they, they grow up in these, these, I hate to say it, you know, they grow up in these public schools and they believe 
that what, what everything that's taught to them is the truth, and they should believe that. The problem is, is, is everything that's taught to these kids in these schools is not the truth. They have this, this just complete uh, lack of um, education while they're being educated. And what, what they don't understand, you know, the, 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 pub, the public school, they get up there, and even private schools, they'll get up there and they'll say, well, gee, you know, the, the purpose of education is to, or the purpose of, you know, K through 12 is to get a good job and to, or, or to, you know, have good, good grades, 4.0 GPA, and then to go off to college, and then, uh, you know, spend a ton of money at college, or, or hopefully, you know, maybe we'll have free college one day. You know, that, that's what they say. Well, you go off to even a tech school or whatever, so you can, um, so you can learn enough, so you can get a good job, so you can have a good life, and then eventually you'll be able to send your kids to college, so they can get a good job and have a good life, and then on and on and on and on. That's a complete lie. Amen. So they, they learn these things. That's what the school system teaches. Do you know, you know the reason why you go to school? Is so you can learn how to read the Bible. That's right. The most important education that you'll ever have are within these four walls. Preach. Or you could you know, go on the internet and, and learn other, other things. But the purpose of education is to learn the Bible. The purpose of education is to learn what God says. That's the truth. The purpose of education is to learn the truth. So they go off to uh, university and then they, they become, all these little kids, they become atheists or, or agnostics or, uh, or whatever. They, you know, they become liberals. And they, uh, they don't learn the truth. The truth is what's in the Bible. We're actually going to we're actually going to find that out. So you're in uh, John. I, I try to keep everything in John um, here for the next uh, little bit. So we're going to get the definition of truth. And so turn to John. Just we'll go back. John 17:17. 17, 17. And um, where is it? So John 17:17. 17, 17, we're going to define what the truth is. So Pilate asked the question, "What is truth?" So we'll we'll just answer the question for him. So in the Bible it says, uh, John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Amen. So the words of God are true. Amen. So they're not just true because that's what the Bible says. They're true because they're actually true. Amen. That's Amen. the truth. We're going to actually keep on, so, so you'll be able to understand what I just said. We're going to actually have to keep on defining what the truth is. So not only is the Bible the words of God are true, but they, that truth actually stands independent of the Bible. How is that? Well, because God instituted that truth. So the words of God are true, not just because they're in the Bible, but they're actually true because that's actually the truth. I know that, that seems strange, but we'll, we'll move on. All right, so go back to John 16:13. And basically what that means, what I just said, was that there, there is truth that's outside the Bible that God made. God makes everything that's true. Amen. Um, like um, there are certain sciences that, are, that, that have truth in them and they have lies in them. There are certain books, other books, like you, you pick up an auto manual and it's chocked full of truth. But that doesn't mean that that's the Bible. You know, so there is truth outside the Bible. You, you can pick up pretty much any automobile manual and it will be uh, a perfect book. Everything in it will be true. And the reason why is because if you take that automobile manual and you build a car with it, the car will work. It'll work, every, everything will work if you go by the auto manual. And there are perfect books. A man made that perfect book. And so you have another perfect book that God made. So if man can make a perfect book, and man is imperfect, then you have a perfect God making a perfect book. It's not that hard to make a perfect book. And God did that. So there is truth outside the Bible, but the words of God are true. All right, so John 16, 13. It says, uh, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. 
That's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is truth. So the Bible says the Holy Spirit is truth. So let's move down to uh, John 14, 6. You guys probably already know this. Most people should know this one. John 14, 6. And uh, a person asked, you know, they'll, this person asked Jesus, well, well, John 14, 5, it says, uh, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you notice the, the words there, Jesus said he is the truth. Jesus is the truth. He also said, I am, which is actually prophetic. If you go back to uh, Exodus 3.14, go back there. I don't have a little slide, so we've got to do a lot of Bible turning tonight. I, I apologize. This would be on a slide, but it's, it's not. Exodus 3.14 and uh, oh, you don't have to put the book up there for them. That's fine. They got, they got books at home. They better have a Bible at home. Exodus 3.14. This is why it's important that Jesus said, I am the way. Exodus 3.14 says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am sent me unto you. So... I have to, sorry, I'm going to have to move that a little bit. <laughs> this microphone is killing my mojo. We're going to have to. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have a definition of the truth. The definition of the truth is actually, according to the Bible, it's really crazy. The definition of the truth is basically that which is. I, the truth is that which actually is. So... You have God saying, I am. Well, he is. He, and we have the Bible saying, well, the truth, or God is the truth. So truth is actually that which actually is. So that, that brings up a whole nature of truth that, that we can study. And we'll, we'll go over the nature of truth here. Um, these are just what you can derive out of that. So... We're going to uh, talk about the nature of truth just a little bit. And uh, one of the first things is truth is not relative. It's absolute. Um, if something is true, it's true for all people at all times and in all places. Amen. So let's think about that for a second. If, to, to just give that a little understanding. So it's like what's true for you is true for me what's true for me is true for you. So you have uh, arguments against that. Like you, you guys ever remember seeing that um, uh, it was a meme with the dress and uh, where the dress looked purple in one thing or blue in another and it, what was it? Blue and, blue and gold, the blue and gold dress. It went, around, it went around the internet, you know, it was all over Facebook. So. <laughs> probably don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. No, I'm talking to the lady behind you. Anyway, but um, so there was the blue and the gold dress. And depending upon, like, depending upon how, how your eyes reacted to the color on the screen, you, you, would, you would look at that and you would say, oh, okay, well, that's blue. And then another person would come along and say, oh, it's, it's what, gold. So you had these two people thinking that the truth was that it was this color or this color. Well, the problem is, is the truth is, is that that dress is actually a color. It just, it depends upon your perspective of, you know, it depends upon how the light is reacting with your eye. So the truth is, yes, the dress is a color, but, okay, so if I looked at the dress, I saw it as gold. Was it true that I saw that dress as gold? Yes, yes it was true that I saw that dress as gold. Mariah looks at it and says, oh, she sees what, blue? She sees blue. Was it true that Mariah saw that dress as blue? No. Yes. yes. Yes, it is. A thousand years from now, there's going to be some astronaut somewhere on, on some distant planet. To that astronaut on a distant planet a thousand years from now, 
is it true that Mariah saw that dress as blue? She did see that dress as blue. So e even if, oh, it's heresy because of outer space? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so a thousand years from now, when we're all in heaven, and, uh, and you know, we're all in heaven after, you know, or uh, actually that would be heresy too. 2,000 years from now, when we're all in heaven, Amen. and we're, well, except there are some people who won't. Anyway, so uh, next year, would it be true that, that Mariah saw that, that person or saw that dress as blue? Yes, it would be true. So it's true for her, it's true for me, it's true for you, it's true for everybody. That is the nature of truth, okay? Just because something does have um, a certain perspective doesn't mean that there is not truth. Truth does exist, and you can know what the truth is. This is, it's like, this is a revolutionary, crazy idea for people outside of this room. You have no idea how crazy that idea is. Relativism is, is a scourge on, on our minds. Relativism is, um, it's just evil. I, I just, anyway, but truth is second, a second part of truth. Truth is discovered, not invented. It is independent of anyone's knowledge of it. Okay, so to give you an example of that, um, there is, uh, okay, gosh, okay, you have the Schrodinger's cat. You guys ever heard of the Schrodinger's cat thing? Where basically there was this guy named Schrodinger and he came up with this crazy theory where if you were to put poison inside of a box and then you were to put the cat inside of a box and you had a little timer that then, and I'm not, I'm not saying it right, obviously he had a thing, you had a little timer that then you know, blew up the poison and the poison got in the box and then the, the cat would die inside the box. That he said that, well, the cat didn't really die, or he said, well, I don't know if he said this or not, but he said, we don't know if the cat actually died until we opened the box. And so therefore the cat didn't die until we opened the box. That's, that's false. Obviously, the cat did die in the box sometime before we opened it. But, and that is true. So in, truth is actually independent. It's the old, uh, well, if a tree falls in the woods, this is, this is modern day Schrodinger's, is if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's around to hear it, does it actually make a sound? What do you, what do you guys think? It makes a sound? Yeah. Yeah. Raise your hand if it makes a sound. So I've got one person who thinks it doesn't make a sound and he's asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, Yes, it does make a sound. And how do we know that? Well, we don't. We, we have no idea. There's really no way to find that out until we actually hear it. But I can tell you, given all the other trees that I've heard hit the ground, there's 100% of all the other trees that I've heard, me personally heard, hit the ground, they all made a sound. And if you ask anybody out there, does a tree make a sound when it hits the ground? Yes, it makes a sound. But we actually don't know that if that one particular tree made a sound when it hit the ground. But we, we all confidently raised our hand and said, yes, it makes a sound. And that's because truth is independent of, of sight. It's independent of hearing. It's independent of man. So um, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, that was before man. Did that actually happen? Yes. yes, it actually did happen. That's the truth. The truth is, yes, it did happen. So it doesn't take people to make truth. People and truth are, are, are as far away from each other as possible. People come in and they, they actually distort the truth. They actually, uh, which, which is actually impossible. You, you can lie, but you can't really distort the truth. So truth is actually independent. Truth is a lot like God. If you, have a, if you have a person and a God, or and God, the person doesn't change God. The person can't change truth. Remember, the Bible said, Jesus is truth. So we can, we can develop a nature from things that are actually true, things that, that, that are actually there. So truth is unchanging, even though our beliefs about truth change. 
So this is an argument that's near and dear to my heart about the flat earth. We're gonna, I'm going to talk about the flat earth. Okay, so I'm sorry. We have, we, have a, we have people who believe in flat earth and we have people who don't. But does that, does that change the truth about the nature of the earth? No. no. So you can have a flat earth or a round earth, but whatever you believe doesn't actually change the nature of the earth. It is what it actually is. So hey, come on in. Good to see you. Don't worry. I'll do a synopsis real quick. No, don't worry about it. Okay. So truth, or our beliefs, don't change what actually is true. Okay, if water is wet and you believe it's dry, that don't make it dry. Amen. Okay, truth is, is what it is. You can't uh, change it based on your belief. A lot of the, I just actually going home from work, I, I was turning on the radio and uh, I heard this, uh, there, there was this TV program, and, or not TV, radio program, and they had on the radio this, uh, this lady who was uh, advocating for gender uh, transition. She was, she was actually on a right-wing radio site and the guy had her on and they were talking about it. And I kept on thinking, you know, because they had callers call in and say, oh, what is this, what is this, what about this, what about this? And I said, well, actually, the, the key to this whole gender issue is, is like, can you change your gender? The, the honest point is no, you can't. Your beliefs, your feelings, cannot change your gender. You, you are either born a boy or you're born a girl. That's, that's, that's biology. Your beliefs and your um, feelings don't actually change. You can feel like a girl if you're a boy or you can feel like a boy if you're a girl and you can go through all kinds of surgery and hormone treatment and all that kind of stuff, but you actually can't change an XY chromosome into an XX chromosome. The, the chromosomes are in you. You can't change your chromosomes. You're either a boy or a girl. That's just the truth. And your belief and your feelings about that cannot change what is actually true. Because it's actually true. It's not just something made up. Truth is actually true, not made up. So beliefs cannot change fact no matter how sincerely they are held. So your belief cannot change what is an actual fact. So it, if you, you can get up here and, uh, that it, you know, what, one of my thoughts, what about me? You know, if, if I get up here and I, and I say definitively that truth exists and you can't change truth and all that kind of stuff, and I rant and rave or whatever, and I make a, a very sincere argument, well, what if I'm lying? Well, what, what's the truth in that? So what if somebody else gets up here and they rant and rave and make a really good argument for, hey, uh, truth is relative. Well, just because of how sincere they are doesn't make it true or not. You can have somebody uh, who sincerely believes a lie, but it's still a lie. You know, you had people who sincerely believed that you know, that Adolf Hitler was their, was their man, their, their God. But then after, you know, after Hitler came down and, and uh, you know, the, the Germany was toppled and stuff like that, they said, oh yeah, you know, I don't sincerely believe that anymore. I'm not sincerely a Nazi anymore. Well, but at the time they believed it. Now what changed? The truth or them? They, they actually changed. Not, uh, not what actually was true. So, Truth is not affected by attitude of the one possessing it. So um, truth is not affected by the attitude of, of the person possessing it. So one of, uh, what was it, uh, one of Peter Ruckman's things was he would get up and he would say, you know, that, that people are like dogs. So um, everybody's probably heard this before where he said, well, people are like dogs. You know, they, they want to feel good or you, you, you can talk to them you know, like you would a dog. So if you got up here and you said, oh, 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 you little, oh, come here, little puppy. I'm gonna take you and I'm gonna string you up and we're gonna make you into little, little pork chops. You know, the dog would come along and he'd say, yeah, yeah, let's do that. But you were to say, oh, come here, you uh, good dog. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed you steak. Well, 
the truth is the, the dog should want the steak, not being made into pork chops. But the attitude of the person doesn't change whether it's true or not. That's actually, um, it's, it's, a, it's a poor argument. And I think, you know, Gray gets, uh, you know, he gets labeled a, a, a hater because he'll tell people the truth in a, you know, loud way. I would, I would call it loud, yeah. In an upfront way, upfront, yeah. So number six, so all truths are absolute truths. You cannot have any truth anywhere that is not absolute, and I absolutely know that. So you, you have a person, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, well, truth is relative. And, you know, I, or, or there is no, you have a person to say, well, there is no absolute truth. Well, what you want to say to that person is, are you absolutely sure about that? Well, yeah, they're absolutely sure that there are no absolute truths. So, right, yeah, that's a good point. Absol there are absolute answers. Two plus two does indeed equal three. Four, yeah, four. <laughs> I'm, preaching, I'm preaching lies. So, um, all truths are absolute. Um, even truths that appear to be relative are really absolute. So, as we go back to the dress, that appears to be a relative truth, the, the dress, you know, depending upon how you look at it, that's what's true. That's wrong. They're both different. They're both, this, they're both a truth. One's true, the other's true. So, truth is knowable. This um, truth is knowable. That's a big one. So we're gonna, we're gonna actually stop for a little bit right there and we're gonna talk about this. Truth is knowable kills liberals. They hate it. They hate that you can actually know what the truth is. That's one of the biggest, one of the biggest, whenever I talk to a liberal, that's one of the biggest things that, that stops them is that I say, well, you can know the truth. Well, you know, they, they say, no, you can't know the truth. That's, that's one of the biggest things that, that stops a person from getting saved. You know, go, go, to, um, go to Acts 4.12, we'll say. So, uh, you know, I go knock on doors. I say to people, hey, um, are you saved? Do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? What do, you, what do you think they ask me? They say, no, nobody can know for sure that they're going to heaven. That's what they say. That's, it's, it happens every time. It happens so much that I've got it underlined in my Bible. Oh, no, there's a little, it's underlined. So Acts 4.12, it says, um, nope, that's not it. <laughs> As, well, actually, it says, neither is, is there salvation in any other, for there, that's not it. I don't know where it's at. But basic, it's 1 John, John 5.13. 5, 13. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go to 1 John 5.13. That's actually what it is. It starts at 11. I could almost quote it for you, but I don't. First, I, I don't have this in my notes. That's Mariah said, stick to your notes, Steve. First John 5, 11 through 13. Well, let's just go to, um, okay, so First John 5, 11. It says, uh, and this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life, and this life is in the, his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath life, I'm sorry, and he Sorry. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And then it goes on to say, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. I'll say that again. These things have I written unto you.